All right, Jane, very quickly elaborate on this question of what kind of a moment this is. We're in an election year, people are ran, you know, mobilizing to vote, but you call this a not business as usual moment. What do you mean? Well, we only have 11 years left, and you know, the, the potent thing about Greta Thunberg is that she, because of who she is, the fact that she's on the spectrum, the fact that she sees things with a clarity unadulterated by what people want to believe or want to deny. She saw it. She couldn't believe people were behaving as, as though there wasn't a crisis. And she was so shocked that she went into trauma and stopped eating and speaking. And when I read that, I realized, that's right, she saw the truth. We have to do everything we can now. This is the time. We only have 11 years. Leave our comfort zone and become more, more of an activist. And what, have you, what have you changed? In your life well, I moved there. to D.C. for four months, and uh, we're holding. Uh, I've been working with Greenpeace and a number of other environmental organizations to to hold these fire drill Fridays. Greta says our house is on fire. We have to behave like it is. So we're having fire drill Fridays, and um, and then we have a teach-in every Thursday night, a digital teach-in live stream around the world and people around the world ask us questions and we have experts, scientists, dealing with the specific topics that we're dealing with the next day. And it's having an impact. People are talking about it and know about it all around the world. You're going from here to the Progressive Caucus Summit uh, at Crosstown. How do you connect this work to this election year that's coming up? They do. Well, well, we have to elect people that are brave enough to realize what they have to do. This is. This is like in the 1930s with Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the New Deal. People were in the streets, people were rioting, people were demanding that he help them with major government programs. And he said, I agree with you, now go out and make me do it. One doesn't know what he would have done if there hadn't been all the people in the streets, but they demanded that he help them. And so in his first hundred days, largely by executive order, he put into play all kinds of government pro projects that put tens of millions of people back to work and saved them and helped rest restore the soil, helped turn back the, the environmental degradations that had been happening and uh, since slavery, by the way. And the scientists now said that's what we need. We need massive numbers of people in the streets. To so force. not just vote but a whole lot more. But, well, we have to vote. We have to vote for the climate. We have to vote for people that are not moderate people who really understand that this is a time when it's too late for moderation, when we have to do something as brave as a Green New Deal. And then we have to stay in the streets to hold their feet to the fire. We can't just elect them and then go away. No matter how good they are, we have to keep pressuring with growing numbers and, if necessary, shut the government down. Can I tell something about how awesome you are? Today is a World Series day. Elijah Cummings is being buried in Baltimore. We have an impeachment process going on, and you want all these people out here to talk about climate change. You are a hero. You are amazing. I just want to well, say thank you. And you are? Corey Westbrook. <laughs> where did you come from? Um, I've been in the environmental community for years. I work for the Endangered Species Coalition, biodiversity. My passion is the planet and people and saving the world. But Jane is a leader, and she's a rock star. Well, I'm following the young people. It's the student strikers. It's, it's the young people that ran from Standing Rock all the way to D.C. to present a petition to the Army Corps of Engineers demanding an end to the pipeline. I mean, these young people are putting their lives on the line. The least us old people can do is support their message and try to lift it up and stand in solidarity. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from, from fire drill Fridays to feet to the fire every day. <laughs> feet to the fire, fire drill Friday. Yeah, that's right. Fire features. Yes. Thank you. So next Thank week you. will be women? Next week is the climate and its effect on women and how and why women are leading the way. We bear the burden and we lead the way. And, the week and our friend yeah. Eve Ensler is going to be with us. Among I think I heard others. a rumor you were going to be here on your birthday. I will be hopefully arrested and in jail for my 82nd birthday, yeah. <laughs> what a better way. There's no better way to celebrate a birthday. <laughs> 21st of December. Hey. Vegetarians in this line. I will be getting arrested with you on the 21st. There you go. All right, no better way to celebrate. Thank you so much, Jane Fonda. Re Reverend William Barber is going to be here for, for that on that Sunday. He's going to sing happy birthday to me. I may have to join in. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Keep at it.
Well, there you have it. We're at the moment in a kind of lockdown position where I think the police are going to just let us stay here indefinitely rather than have another arrest of Jane Fonda and her crew. But who knows what she has up her sleeve. Anything could happen. And I think you heard it. That This is somebody who's been deeply inspired by what she's seen and is deploying her celebrity, her fabulous outfits, her incredible energy, um, and her smarts that she's brought to social justice throughout her entire life. A career now spanning many, many decades from the Vietnam War to the fight for the climate, and we're happy to be here for it.